Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. My dear students of MA final year, how you folks are doing? In our today's class, we will go through Song of Myself, section six. The title of this section is Grass. That is the the title of section number six is grass and I will first recite section number six and later I will explain I will in interpret I will tell you the interpretation and critical appreciation of this wonderful section and finally I will tell you the explanation of, of a few lines and my dear students let me begin with the recitation of this section grass a child said what is the grass facing it to me with full hands how could I answer the child I do not know what is any more than be I guess it must be the flag of my disposition out of hopeful green stuff of him or I guess it is the handkerchief of the Lord a scented gift and remembrancer designedly dropped bearing the winner's name some way in the corners that we may see the remark and say whose or I guess the grass is itself a child the produced babe of the vegetation or I guess it is a uniform hieroglyphic and it means sprouting alike in broad zones and narrow zones growing among black folks as among white Kanuk Taco congressman calf I give them the same I receive them the same and now it seems to me the beautiful uncut hair of Graves, tenderly will I use you curling grass. It may be you transpire from the breasts of young men. It may be if I had known them, I would have loved them. It may be you were from old people or from offspring, offsprings taken soon out of their mother's laps. And here you are the mother's laps. This grass is very dark to be from the white heads of old mothers, darker than the colorless beards of old men, dark to come from under the faint red roofs of mouths, or I perceive, after all so many uttering tongues, and I perceive they do not come from the roofs of mouths for nothing. I wish I could translate the hymns about the dead young men and women and the hints about old men and mothers and the offspring taken soon out of their laps. What do you think has become of the young and old men and what do you think has become of the women and children? They are alive and well somewhere. The smallest sprout shows there is really no death and if ever there was, there was it let forward life and does not wait at the end to arrest it and sees the moment life appeared and goes onward and outward nothing collapses and to die is different from what anyone supposed and luckier my dear Stephen Stevens this is this is a very simple poem and the poem is about about the identity of a grass the question asked by a child to the poet regarding the identity of the grass and let me first tell you the interpretation of the poem and later I will tell you the critical I will now tell you the interpretation and critical appreciation of this wonderful poem the poet deals with the essence of his poetry grass in this section a child is an innocent a child in an innocent manner brings a cluster of 
grass or a tuft of grass and questions the poet what is the grass and innocent questions question no doubt but it suggests volumes of meaning at first the poet says that he doesn't know the meaning of grass any better than the child does perhaps it may be an expression of his own personality again he feels it may be the handkerchief of the lord a scented gift and remembrancer designedly dropped the grass would be a reminder to mankind of the greatness of god it will set people to think about the creator of the grass it will automati automatically automatically lead to the awareness that god who made everything in the universe also created the grass every creation of god has a purpose the grass for example proves the existence of god the grass is green the green color projects the optimism of the poet the grass arouses many associations and me and meanings in the mind of the poet he guesses if the grass is itself a child the produced babe of the vegetation many qualities are common to the grass and the child it is lovely carefree like the child the grass unravels the mysteries of this very universe a child out of curiosity and innocence goes on questioning and the answers reveal the mysteries of life the grass is carefree and grows in all places it has no option to grow only in a specific places it grows among the black as well as white folks in broad as well as narrow zones this suggests the democratic spirit with which the poet always emphasizes and and always advocates whitman presents the eternal inevitable death in its mysterious relation to love and rebirth without challenging its mystery or 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 lo loading its potency the theme of his poetry would remain incomplete if he did not refer to the unconquerable death death is uh, dreaded by one and all it is the final chapter in life this is the common accepted factor whitman by his approach clarifies that death is an opening to another life to another journey he says the grass appears to me the beautiful uncut hair of graves tenderly will i use you curling grass the grass grows on the graves of the people who die the people may be young old men or women the dead grow out in the form of the curling grass the poet tries to translate the ideas of the dead expressed in the form of the curling grass he questions the grass to tell him of the well-being of the dead he thinks of what has happened to the dead he knows that they are in other forms they are in other forms but not disintegrated or separated the scientific theory that matter is never destroyed has been expressed or analyzed by the poet the smallest spout shows there is really no death and if ever there was it late forward life and doesn't wait at the end to harvest it and sees the moment life appeared he feels the grass replying that the dead are alive death is the continuity of life the smallest spout though small insignificant and common becomes significant as the process involves as the process involved in the creation of the universe is the same in the creation of the grass also the existence of the grass on the graves suggests that the dead are still living in in a different shape the grass suggests that death is
transformation into a new life. And now, my dear students, let me tell you the explanation of these four lines. Uh, or I guess it is the handkerchief of the Lord, a scented gift and remembrancer designedly dropped, bearing the owner's name some way in the corners, that we may see and remark and, and say whose. These lines from the gist of Whitman's poetry, this suggestive verse from the section grass of Song of Myself proves the belief in the existence of God. When a child questions the poet what the tuft of grass me meant, is resulted in many explanation, explanations. The child's question challenges the poet's intellect. He thinks aloud, aloud if the grass is the Lord's handkerchief, the Lord might have dropped it for mankind to ponder over whose workmanship it is. Therefore, automatically to remind mankind of God, the creator of the universe, who also is the creator of the grass, so a sphere of grass would lead mankind to think of God and his ways. One is mystified to think that it is the same God who created this entire universe, who also created the tiny insignificant grass. Yet the insignificant grass unravels the mystery of the universe. A sprout of grass sets afoot a series of guesses about what it exactly stands for. The poet openly puts forward his guesses. At first, the grass appears to be a handkerchief of God, reminding men of the existence of God. The grass also stands for the innocent child. The poet emphasizes that the sprout of grass on the graves suggests that death is not the final say in life. The sprout of grass bears evidence to the fact that death is not an end in itself, but it is the beginning of another life. My dear students, with these few important things, I would like to wrap up my discussion for today and hope you will enjoy listening this wonderful section, section 6, entitled Grass. Thank you.